I don't have any food. I'll admit it. I will brag. Those players did not just go and whip that ass for us to be like, this is not a good game. No, we whipped your ass. We took $800,000 and now we're gonna party with you. Yeah, who cares if you're in the Power Five Conference if you don't win it ever? If you don't beat any of the teams in it. Like, what's the point of that? Wouldn't you rather win the conference and say, like, hey, my team is good, than lose the conference and say, well, our conference is good? Well, I'll tell you what, I got two teams that got me gassed up. It's going to be a hell of a battle. It'd be like two dogs fighting over a milk bar. Look, they don't call me tip for nothing. And my tip is look out for the group of five this season. They've been taking it to the Power Five year after year. The only quarterbacks that ever get any love are from the Power Five. I could easily list off the top group of five quarterbacks I would rather have than those guys. I would be willing to bet that at least one of them is going to be in the running for the Heisman. Hey, Jeff. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Group of Five Guys podcast, episode number 20, coming at you right now, bowl preview show. We got a big couple of weeks of football. This is a good time of year, even though football season's winding down. It's a good time of year. You got football damn near every day, all times of day. You got matchups you don't often see. Um, let's go around the horn, introduce everybody. Jesse Grisham, always a pleasure, sir. Sprouse, how are you? Well, I couldn't be better. I mean, me and, me and Grisham got together this weekend, ate some lamb. I mean, I, I'm tired, boss. I swear. I feel like every weekend I've just been going hard. I just, I need a weekend to just let the old take the old batteries out of my back and put them on the charger. Just need yeah. to sit down and relax. Had a fantastic weekend. Great food. Chef in the kitchen uh, prepared some lamb. My personal chef, and he did a hell of a job yeah. on the lamb. And then uh, my 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 maid, she she did all the rest, and she did a fantastic job as well. No, but in serious, uh, shout out to my wife. She did a yeah. hell of a job preparing some food for us, and we had a good time. Unfortunately, you know Zeke had a other uh, corporate event and couldn't attend. And shout out to Tyler Tipton, yeah, having a baby uh, this weekend. And uh, Jeff had some uh, you know underlying circumstances to come happen this weekend. So you know thoughts are with Jeff and his family. But all sadness away, we had a great time, Sprouse. Well, I had a hell of a time. I mean, the old I, rain, the old reindeer private part drink was pretty good. It's still in my refrigerator. What's it called, Sprouse? Uh, well, um, in the rated R version, it's called reindeer jizz. Mm -hmm. Um, you could also call it Puerto Rican eggnog, coquito, as they call it in South Florida. Um, but uh, it was pretty good. And then, yeah, I mean, shout out to your wife, Jess. I mean, she put together a smorgasbord. Yeah. of incredible food and then you yeah. you did the meat you cooked up the meat well i mean you had the neighborhood over there we got a little lit up and we start i mean the thing about this guys when you go to the grisham household it's like i really it's just whenever any of us guys get together as soon as the door opens first beer cracks yeah and i mean it wasn't like i mean we we never got to the point where we were just lit up but it was just like at all times you had a drink in your hand and I mean, you go from Miller Lite to hot ruby red mule to reindeer. There was at one point, I think I ingested about eight different types of alcohol. <laughs> and I was like, and Michaela's like, you need to stop. She's like, you're not going to sleep in this bed with me because I was going to make all kind of atrocious sounds that night. Because <laughs> yeah. I had the reindeer jizz. I had white wine. I had red wine. I had Moscow mule. I had Miller Lite, Coors Lite. And then I had a few shots of Makers More. Oh, no, Four Roses. Four Roses, so yeah. All that mixed together with just different kind of pork and beef no wonder i'm gonna die in 10 years like it is ridiculous <laughs> with all the stuff i put in my body on a daily basis i was yeah. gonna say sprouse if you think that's when Gr grisham cracked his first beer when you walked through the door no yeah no. i texted him about 9 a.m i said i'm on the way and i heard it from i heard it from two hours away mm -hmm. I, knew, I knew he was ready for you so all right i'm waiting at the door <laughs> we had we had a good time though and i, I appreciate you know sprouse and his family coming and Help allowing us to entertain. It was it was a good. Hopefully, we can try to do something like that again next year. Yeah, we had a lot of, and you know how it goes. You start you start boozing a little bit. All the ideas start. All the brilliant ideas start coming. Let me you gotta tell you write what. that crap down when you're drinking because I don't know what we talked about. Yeah, I don't know, but I think we <laughs> invented we invented a couple of things. But uh, 
Uh, yeah, shout out to Tyler Tipton. Man, he can't be with us tonight. The guy had a baby two days ago. Emily Tipton, happy, healthy, wife, daughter, everybody's home. I think they're. I think she's home now, right? Do we know? Yeah, I think they're getting getting. I think they're coming home today. I think. Yeah. So another member, another group of five gal to the team here. So no congratulations, doubt. Tip. Congrats, um, brother. Zeke Anderson, you possibly have the best Christmas sweater. I don't know if that's a sweater, but that I've ever seen on. So how are you this evening? I'm doing great. You know, it's not bad. I got to support the Tito's. There was a lot of that drink this weekend. And as Jesse mentioned, couldn't quite make it to you guys. Had a corporate event. And and to add to that, when I left to go to my company Christmas party, Army was up on Navy and I thought had control of the game. Now I'm I'm just now finding out that Navy beat Army. Well, you know I mean, why too? Can... The long snapper. The long yeah, snapper won the game for him. <laughs> Gotta love that. He did. He did. We, we, yeah, we'll definitely get into that game a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've got thoughts on that. I, I almost feel like they should play that game when everybody else plays that game, you know, rivalry rivalry weekend. Um, but it was not. It is cool to be the only game on. And, I mean, you got a packed house. You got everybody watching that game. But um, Jeff Murphy, it's good to see you, sir. Good to see you, boys. Apologize not being able to make it down to the company Christmas party this year, but I definitely will be there next year. Had serious FOMO. You guys posting the the pictures and the videos on the story. Looks like y'all had a great time and great food and great drinks. So, but coming to an end. We were right here at bowl season. Got my Motor City Bowl from uh, t shirt from 2006 when the Blue Raiders played the Chippewas. Forgot to rock that tonight, but uh, it's here, man. Bowl season's yeah. one of my favorite favorite times of year. Yeah, you really get these matchups that you don't uh, you don't get often. So. I mean, it is like I mean, we got we got lines and spreads we're gonna pick for y'all, but nobody knows. I mean, nobody has any clue. What what's what's more fun to y'all? I mean, this before group of five guys was it filling out the bowl pickums or is it March Madness filling out the, the tournament? I like the bowl. I mean, that's just me. I'm not a big college basketball. I like fan, the bowl so. pickums too. Yeah, I mean, March Madness is always fun, but something about the bowls, and it, I, I feel like you know, especially these. Uh, I don't want to say smaller bowls, but not the not the New Year's Six bowls. You those right there are, are toss ups most of the time. Yeah. It don't matter what. The, take, take the records away because it's oh, a new season when you get the bowl season. We do know this: the MAC will probably go undefeated. Eight, no. They'll go eight. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, they will. One hundred percent, they will. Um, well, yeah. But before we get going any further, make sure, of course, you guys like and subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcast, uh, follow us on Twitter. We're getting close to four thousand followers on Twitter. It's a little milestone oh, yeah. we've been trying to hit. So you guys make sure you follow us on there, retweet, share anything you can. Just help us out. Help fight the good fight of uh, the group of five. You know. I'll drop in my reservoir naked. We get to 4,000 on back Tuesday <laughs> night. That damn reservoir was had some rapids on yeah, Saturday. You can, you if you take the wrong step, you step in a hole, you could roll down <laughs> yeah. Grisham's backyard into that bad boy. <laughs> yeah, he's through the fence. He's I got We're a 16 out here, huh, Frank? <laughs> I got a 16-month-old, and Grisham's like, well, you think the kids can go play outside? I'm thinking, yes. <laughs> he barely's walking. He's going to roll down the hill. <laughs> uh, we would but, call him. But, uh, no, I mean, we got a little bit of the storms. But that's another thing, guys, not to be somber here, but, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers to the folks yeah. in Kentucky, um, our Bowling Green friends, um, Bowling Green Kentucky friends. You know, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, you know, we're, we're thinking about you. That's stuff's scary, dude. I've never – I never really been through a tornado, and it's it maybe is the scariest looking natural disaster. It was wild. It was wild. It was reported. There's they've got a bunch of data on it now. It was on the ground for two hundred and thirty miles. Ooh. I heard it was like three miles wide. It is was. That, is that? It was. How, how is that possible? It, it's mad. It was massive. Or maybe three came, miles. It came in, from in, like in, in Arkansas, West know. Tennessee. Yeah. yeah, It started in Arkansas and went all the way through West Tennessee into Kentucky and a little bit in Illinois. It looks like an atomic bomb went off in those yeah. small towns of Kentucky. Mm. Yeah, well, shout out to Scary those guys. Stuff. I mean, yeah, I hope, hope everybody's everybody's okay. Um, on this show, we're going to go through, we're going to pick all these bowl games. Um, we, of course, we got an atrocious award for you. Um, before we get going, let's look at this Army-Navy game a little bit. So like Zeke said, I mean, Army came out right off the bat um, and looked all right. And then it was pretty much a defensive battle. Uh, for the rest of the game, uh, Navy ends up winning the game 17 13. 
not a lot of offense, not a lot of yards. I um, mean, tell not a lot of points. Um, but Jesse, you brought it up. I mean, the the play of the game was a fake punt quote, but apparently nobody knew it was a fake punt. When I first saw the post game interview, I thought he was joking. You know, you had the the tears in their eyes, and they were just so yeah. emotional for pulling off this upset. I mean, again, that's a that's a rivalry game for you, just like any other rivalry game. You never know what's going to happen. So apparently, the long snapper, he was supposed to snap it to the punter, and I don't know if he thought it was a fake or something, but he snaps it directly to their star linebacker, who just looks at it and takes off and gets a five yard, five to seven mm-hmm. yard first down on a fourth down, and that ends the game for him. Yeah, and wow. it was it was. I got chill bumps <laughs> yeah. just thinking about it because can you imagine <laughs> if they wouldn't have got it? That long snapper would probably be on the bus by himself going back, going back yeah. to Navy. But it yeah. was got the wrong call, nuts. baby. Yeah, yeah the, wrong the, call paid off. And shout out to old Diego Fago. Went to my high school. How about that? So star linebacker right. for Navy. Yeah. He uh he's been hell, I feel like that guy's been there for a long time. He looked but old. He, yeah, he had like nine or ten tackles too. And then the well, play of the went game. Went to high school with you, Sprouse. How old is this guy? During no, his post-game no, no, interview, no, no. he, he was holding two kids. Me. His wife was on okay, his arm. Right. Same school. Uh, same yeah, school. school. I got you. When I, I graduated. Like he was a... No, 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 no. You know, the long snapper may have he may have called an audible himself. He wouldn't be the first time. Wouldn't have been the first time the long snappers called an audible. You got to watch out for those long snappers, man. They uh, they they go by their own book. That's he right. may have yeah. that linebacker. He wasn't expecting it. Yeah, he he snagged that, that like, thing. Yeah, yeah. He was like, "What in the hell?" <laughs> then he had to break a tackle, and uh, but and then they talked to the coach afterwards. He was like, "It was a mistake. <laughs> nobody, That's nobody right. was supposed to do that." So sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Navy yep. ends up winning. A, you know, the thing is, Army still keeps the Commander in Chief's trophy though, because they it was they all Three beat each time, other right? this year. Yeah, and Army had it last year, so Army Army keeps the trophy. But I think Navy's probably uh, the happiest of the of the three right now. Well, especially that game. It's it, you know rivalries always can go either way, but when you get you know when you get Army and Navy and Air Force playing each other, I, I feel like it's just a whole nother level in those games and you got two teams that play the same way yeah. and it's going to be just a down and dirty game. And, and cause I honestly thought army was going to beat them by at least two, two and a half, three scores. Yeah. And you're just getting these dog fight trench games and maybe you pulled like, it out, man. Good for them. Well, it's like and, they all three got the same playbook pretty much. <laughs> and yeah. so like, you don't even have to do scouts that week. You're just like, all right guys, like let's line up and yeah. let's tough it out. Well, that, that game was played in MetLife Stadium. Yep. So, I mean, it's essentially a home game for Army, and yet they're up, and everybody in the first half, even the announcers were like, yeah, well, uh, Navy answered, but, you know, Army's Army came out strong, and then Army didn't score another point. I'm thinking yeah. halftime, I'm going to my Christmas party. I'm like, all right, I'm going to look at this game in two hours, and it's going to be, you know, like you said, they're going to be up two scores, and – that's gonna be it. Not I just now found out. <laughs> I went to yeah. bed at seven AM on Sunday morning. Oof. <laughs> then went to the Titans game. Then I went to bed. How are you? Oh hey. I'm good that now. Makes me want to throw up. <laughs> yeah, I got I got up early and left the Grisham household about six thirty AM. I heard you and I, I, I rolled I got, over. I got back here and slept. You probably three woke hours. him up. No, my dog was growling. Oh. <laughs> no. Turned over. Is that her um, or you? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you watched our Instagram story, you saw the swag bear in action with his sounds. Noises I know. I, I loved how Michaela got the video of my daggum gut hanging out of my sweater, <laughs> just laying there on the couch, just snoring away. She gets the It was right videos. after I had our, my uh, – my, oh, actually, no, make that 10 alcoholic drinks. I, had, I ended the night with Bailey's. So we oh, had some good, Bailey's hot God. chocolate that knocked me out. Jungle juice. <laughs> Jeez. Mix all those uh, things together. I <laughs> 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 made a suicide drink. So I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Bell. Eight liquor <laughs> ass kicker. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Um, well, well, Jess, I, I, I take it you're not going to give yourself the atrocious award for your snoring. But what do you have for us? I can't give an atrocious award to myself for snoring because that's just who I am. But there are people that I want to give a shout out to. What if I were to tell you a story about a young man growing up in 
you know, Western USA in California, growing up to be a Cal fan, went to Cal football games, love Cal, power five, you know, just loving life. What if I told you this guy went to a group of five school, Middle Tennessee State, and then he just left Cal back home. He supported MTSU through and through. I don't think he even watches Cal games anymore. This guy is Jeff Murphy, who goes to MTSU for four or five years, rocks it, moves to Murfreesboro with his beautiful wife, has three children, and this kid and this guy now has grown into a father, a family man, and he bleeds blue. He is a group of five fan. That's not what 90% of these students that go to these schools are. 90% of these students go to these schools, and they represent Power 5 gear. They are envious of the Power 5 schools. This is what my atrocious award to all you students that don't support your schools, to all you students that think that you're too good for your schools, that wear your Power 5 gear to your accounting one class, who do not even know who your mascot is for your football team. You're not good enough to get to the Power 5 school, so why support them? What, what, I, I don't know what you're doing. You're at a group of five school. Show pride in your school. It's atrocious. It's atrocious the fact that we cannot get the right support, the right support as Power 5 universities. That's what we're here for. We're here to bring more recognition to the group of five schools. So all of you Power 5 wannabes that are now attending a group of five school, don't act like you're a group of five guy now because your team is since you're you're a Cincinnati fan because you're over here going to class at, at you know accounting at, at Cincinnati University because oh no you were at Ohio State gear last year promise you yeah. we need to be consistent we need to show love to our teams we need to literally be a family and the, the school that you go to that is your that is your home that is your family stop being atrocious be a group of five family member it's atrocious it's atrocious. Just rambling there for a little bit. But <laughs> seriously, you get what I'm trying to say. I get tired of these power five on. people. I get tired of these power on, five people that are just wearing their, their Tennessee gear yeah. on MTSU campus that are wearing your LSU on Louisiana. I guarantee Cincinnati still has Ohio State people that just wear stuff. But I don't think Ohio State has people wearing Cincinnati gear. Well, it's until, ridiculous. Yeah. Till those know, people find out what I'm Cincinnati's in the playoffs, playoffs. I kind of want to keep going a little bit. Yeah, go. I think if Cincinnati wins a national championship – that the group of five conferences should then be called the power five conferences and the other schools should be group of five. <laughs> Why not? I'm all, for, I'm all for it. Why not? Y- y- we'll you be the power. We the power five guys next year. Cincinnati wins. <laughs> you know who the worst <laughs> ones are? And I, and I, and I see these ones, especially this time of year towards the end of the semester, the worst people are the people that will go into the stadium and take graduation pictures in the oh. stadium that they've never been to the entire oh. four years. They've five years. It's embarrassing. Years. The, I don't the know how these people kind. live with. I don't know how people live with themselves. Like, yeah. you're a fraud. <laughs> like that's that's well, what you are. The guys, those guys have like Lee Corso hanging on a poster in their living room or their bedrooms. Yeah. Like, these, these guys are weirdos. They're weirdos. Well, it's it's also the same, probably the same people. Some of them that are the rec center all stars. When you oh. go into the rec center on the hoop courts or the intramural fields. I can't tell you how many guys, but yet they, they will they, get their ass out and try out for you know when the walk when it's time for the walk ons hey, to go out for camp. They're too good. They they, they actually came from LSU, but they're not yeah, going to play for Louisiana. They didn't play because coach didn't like them. That's what happened. So then they, they don't run the, they don't let, run, they don't run the right kind of scheme for them. Let me tell you all about that exact scenario. Okay, so y'all know I was a walk on at Great Middle Tennessee State University. So I get out there, you know, we have a little team meeting, and there's I mean there's like a hundred guys in the team meeting room and Chris Matuzic football ops guy Tuz. gets up there and he's like, okay guys, we'll probably take one or two of y'all. And I was like, huh. Oh boy. I'm looking around the room with some guys that looked the part. They all got their power five, you know, Nike dry fits on. And I'm like, well, damn, I'm maybe not, you know, I'm just a transfer from the air force Academy. I don't really know if I'm going to make this team. I'm looking around. We go out to tryouts the next day. The first thing they do is warm us up. And we start doing karaoke. And you can tell after about five yards, these guys that played at Tennessee or played at Florida State or whatever, and they don't even know how to get in a three-point stance or do a karaoke. They put their hand up here? Yeah, they got their (laughs) hand up in the air. They're like, and, And you're like, oh, I get it. You made a couple catches at the intramural fields, and you thought because you came to a game and we lost one time that 
you know, these guys suck, this and that, this and that. And then you can't even stretch properly. And then they want to go into the student section and talk all the trash about the guys that are on the field. And look, hey, nobody's saying there's anything wrong with not making the team or whatever, whatever. But the guy that comes out there and talks all the trash about how good they are, well, this is, I should be quarterback. You know, I've won a Madden Super Bowl in my career mode. And then they come out there and they can't even <laughs> run for five yards without falling flat on their face. And they want to talk trash about the guys that come out there and practice their ass off. No question. I'll tell you what, man. But yeah, you're exactly right, Jess. They 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 intramural stars, and then they talk the trash, and then they try. They do. I'll give them that. They do try to come out there, but they don't tell anybody that they were some of some bad. of them. You got you got the ones that won't even come out and try, but yet will sit over there yeah. and be like, you know, make all these excuses to why they didn't or can't or high profile sports injury. Stopping uh, me from going out there. there. Well, Sprouse, I think the most atrocious thing that you said that those guys did was they were wearing other schools' gear yeah. at a tryout yeah. for a different university. So, I mean, whether or not you can karaoke or bend over and touch your toes or not, you're cut from the beginning when you walk, when you show up. Yeah. Wearing your Clemson, your Miami, your I'm going to call this year. guy out right now. I don't know if you listen to the show or not. I will never forget our first year at MTSU. Uh, Zeke, yeah, I think you, me and you were on the team. Jeff hadn't got there yet. Sprouse hasn't transferred yet. A roommate of mine, one of my best friends today, Ty Watson, <laughs> is uh, in the locker room. It's the summer. It's summer pre work uh, preseason uh, summer workouts. We've been there for about two months now. The, uh, the true freshman, and he's a big UT ball guy. Loves Tennessee balls, and he's going to school at Middle Tennessee. He's walking around uh, campus with this UT ball keychain, just keeps hanging out of his pocket. And I told him, I mean, I was like, you might want to be careful of that because I don't think these, you know, 20, 21 year old men are going to appreciate that. He's like, I'm fine. Jacob Patrick, I'll put old Ty against the locker. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, get rid of that shit or I'm going to get rid of you. And Ty's like, it's gone, man. It's gone. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's that is you see a lot of orange. Um, and I, I will specify on my time just a little bit, real quick. Murphy's Murfreesboro, Tennessee, born and raised. My dad played for the Blue Raiders. I've seen a lot of orange in my life and unjustified orange. And it's very hard to walk through that campus and see all that orange. And hopefully. We're putting our foot down and changing that. I'll give Zeke credit. I don't think Zeke's been a ball or Vandy supporter his whole life. He's been Blue Raider till he dies. Until well, since he's born till he dies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're making changes, guys. Well, I mean, oh, it is. Steps. Oh, it is. we're baby. Don't we're let baby us come stepping. to your campus. Don't let us come to your campus. Like, don't let come to freaking you know FIU and I see some you know Miami Hurricane because I might just throw an empty Miller Lite can at your head. Well, yeah, if we no. if we see if we're at a campus and we see it, you better believe we're calling your ass out. Either that or I'm taking pictures and posting it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm putting but behind the, the keyboard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll hashtag the hell out of your ass. Oh, man. Well, guys, let's get to this. Uh, let's get to these bowls here. And we're going to go through all these ones. We're going to not talk a whole lot about Cincinnati. We'll have one more show before that game. And we'll give you a full-blown college football playoff breakdown on Cincinnati and Alabama. And we'll give you our picks on that game. Um, yep. A lot can happen between now and then, so a lot of preparation, a lot of coach speak, all that. So we'll we'll, we'll give it to you right before that game starts. Um, first one, kicking it off, Bahamas Bowl, noon Eastern, Friday, December seventeenth, Middle Tennessee versus Toledo. Toledo ten point favorites. Jesse, what do you think? Um, so I don't want to prolong this. I will say Toledo has a very good rushing attack. Bryant Kobach, he's uh, all Mac running back. I think he's over 1,200 yards rushing with 15 touchdowns. I say that because MTSU in the past is normally has a, a pretty bad rushing defense. Uh, but this year, they're ranked 33rd in the country. 33rd in the country, MTSU is. I think Coach Stock is due a big bowl win. So I'm going to say MTSU upsets Toledo. I'm taking MTSU. I think the defense comes to play and, and beats Toledo. Toledo is probably upset for not being in the conference championship. Potentially be down. I think MTSU is happy to be in a bowl game right now. I think Toledo's let down for where they're at. 
even though it is Bahamas, which is amazing. But yeah, you, know, you, cool. you catch my drift. I'm taking <clears throat> TSU. Murph, do we even have to ask? Where is it? Right there. <laughs> Toledo, Toledo, tomato, tomato. MTSU comes out on top on this. The offense soars. If some way, Rockets. somehow, in hail, the Carmichael RV is in Bahamas, <laughs> that's an easy win. Easy win. I don't know if they had to get a chopper to take it to the Bahamas or what, but that Carmichael RV will be in the Bahamas some way, somehow. Put it on one of those boats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zeke, what do you think? Uh, I've got uh, I've got Toledo winning the game, I, but I got Middle Tennessee falling short by three. I got a stat for you, boys. Bahamas Bowl first ever won was in 2014. It's always been Conference USA versus MAC. What you have had here is a Conference USA winner, then a MAC winner, then a Conference USA winner, then a MAC winner, then a Conference USA winner. Then a Mac winner. So this year, Middle Tennessee is, of course, that Conference USA member. Both of these teams have each been in the Bahamas Bowl once before. Both lost. So I'm taking the Raiders to ride. I'm with you, though, Jesse. Ride, they're, they're, baby. They're, the Blue Raiders had such a slow start to the season, and they've been kind of hot lately. Um, and then they had that huge win at FAU um, to become bowl eligible. So I think you're right. I think – they're riding some momentum. They're kind of excited to be here. Toledo had higher expectations, and they're a little bit down to be there. So I think I'll besides pick the, the Western Kentucky game, I mean, the defense has been playing pretty spot on for the Blue Raiders. Yeah. I mean, and it's not lying. West Kentucky has like the number two offense in the country. So uh, MTSU's defense probably step up. If they can stop the run, I don't see why they wouldn't win. I think yeah. you're right, Jesse. If they stop the run, Blue Raiders. But if they don't, it's going to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing is that, you know, that offense can put up points. So, yeah. You yeah. Know, if you get into a shootout, they can, they can keep up with them. So we'll see. Be interesting. We'll see, who, they can, see who stays they can, out of the casino at the Atlantis Hotel over there. And that's who they're going to have, they're going to have Brent Brock watching the casino. Ain't nobody going to be in a casino. No wonder why they didn't invite me as a booster to go on the trip. <laughs> Would have been in the casino the whole time. We, we were invited. We just didn't make the trip. I didn't get invited. No, I want Check to be on email. the team plane. <laughs> yeah, with the high dollar boost. Yeah, right yeah, up there yeah. with the AD. Yeah, yeah, no, quite, yeah that was a couple words for him. All right, then also on Friday you got the Tail Greeter Cure Bowl. That's at six p.m. on ESPN two. That's Northern Illinois versus Coastal. Coastal ten and a half point favorites. Jess, what do you think? I'm, I'm taking Coastal on this because as good as NIU has been this year and just won the conference. And I know I've said I'm all about Mac. This is my second Mac loss. <laughs> 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 so I'm pretty sure probably all wrong. No, but I think uh, NIU's defense won't be able to hold up against Grayson McCall. He's going to put up too many points. Coastal, I think, I could put, 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 put possibly win this big. <laughs> Jeff? You know, I bet against NIU pretty much all year, and I, I was came up wrong yeah. on most of it. So I'm actually going to take NIU in this game. I think – they're just going to continue to ride this momentum. And I think Coast was a little disappointed in their season. You know, you get to these bowl games and see who takes it serious and see who doesn't. But I like NIU in this one. Where's the tail greeter bowl at? You already say that? Where's that? Cure Bowl's in uh, Orlando, I believe. Mm, okay. They change the names of these damn things so often. Yeah, I can't pre freaking... Pretty confident uh, that's in Orlando. I'm so if you didn't know, I didn't. I, I thought I was out west for some reason, so forget it. Uh, Zeke, what you got in that one? You know, this is a little conflict of interest for me. I've been, you know, high on Coastal all year. Sad to see him here. But uh, also been riding NIU. So I've got my, my high horse and my low horse, and I guess I'm just going to have to say that NIU – Falls a little short of Coastal. I think Grayson McCall spins it a little too well for him. At least I'm sticking true, I said, because I've been against Coastal all year. But bowl season, everything changes. I, 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 <laughs> hey, I and, like and guys, that is in Orlando, Florida. Oh, okay. Tight. They, they've, got, they've got a couple weeks. I mean, 
the bowl season is so crazy because they've got two or three weeks to prepare for these teams and they can give them God, they can give them their best shot. So I, it, that's why bowl season is so exciting. Yeah. These I don't want first... to keep rambling. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go I was going to say it. I hated bowl practice. Remember coaches coach would be so excited. <laughs> you get extra spring training. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> right, let's crank it up three more inside drills for, for yeah. this Tuesday. Well, I was like, I thought we were getting rewarded for going to a bowl game. They're over here killing I, us. I was getting ready to bring that point up. You got some people that love the extra practices and the extra time. Then you got other guys. They're like, God, who, can we just play the bowl well, game already? Well, you know, you know who like the extra practice backs and coaches. Everybody else is just yeah. miserable. Yeah. Well, it's, it's freezing out there. Yeah, that was pretty. <laughs> I know we, I know we got to move on, but making a bowl game is so important for your university because of those extra practices. Yeah. But to Jesse's point, you've got the younger guys who are fighting for a spot next year, so they're going against the older guys, and it's out there. It's camp all over again. Mm-hmm. To an extent, so yeah, the, we're the younger essentially players spring. Are but well, the, the, go ahead. Well, no, the, these first couple, if, if you're going to make a bowl and it's not going to be a New Year's Six Bowl, like the these first want. couple are the what are the ones that go to because the the worst are like you get that Christmas Eve bowl and they're like, okay, congratulations, go home for like four days. Yeah, yeah. report back to campus mm-hmm. and we're going <laughs> two days. Yeah, yeah. freaking. No dude, other students are on campus. You're just freaking in. You're you're exactly right. You're back in camp, and if you're not a you know surefire starter, you're taking all the inside reps or all. Mm-hmm. It's like spring ball. If you're for sure starter, you know two year starter, and you got a little ding on the shoulder, you ain't doing anything. But if you're a guy that's you know a two or a three on the depth chart. I mean, you're taking all them reps in, in bowl practice, but um, and anyway, it's cold as hell. It's cold that's the worst hell. part. It's just cold as hell. It's yeah. just cold. Depends um, where you are. You got. I'll make my pick on this. You got NIU, really good offensive line. Coastal, really good defensive line. Um, I'm just going to be the, the O line guy and take NIU just to split it fifty fifty. Good, good. Yeah. Um. Following day Saturday, it's December 18th. You got a couple bowl games. You got the roofclaim.com Boca Raton Bowl, 11 a.m. on ESPN. It's Western Kentucky versus App State. This is one of the most intriguing games to me. Yeah. It goes back to what I said on my atrocious word last week. Like these are two teams you would think be closer to like New Year Six, in my opinion, how good they played. West Kentucky, um, you know, you're looking at number two total offense, but their defense is like 98th overall in the country. Got App State 18th total defense, and they got 47th total overall. I think Chase Price can pick apart Western Kentucky's uh, defense, so I'm going to take App State to win this one. Murph, this game's all about the quarterbacks, boys. And you got Bailey Zappi, who should have been in New York and was not. He was possibly one of the biggest snubs I've ever seen for the Heisman race in college football. Yeah. At least not to have the guy there it was just shows the complete utter bias they have. Yeah, but. Um, you got Chase Bryce, you know, who did not have the greatest championship game. Um, I'm going to take Bailey Zappi and the Hilltoppers in this one. I will say this. Shout out to App State, man. The love and support they've been showing on social media to Western Kentucky is just awesome. And it shows the class act that App State fans are in the organization and Sean Clark, the, the program that he runs. You know, sorry to change the subject a little bit, but you brought up the Heisman. Did you all see Bryce Young? I mean – Everyone's counted me out my whole life. Give me a break, yeah. dude. Bro, you were a number five star one recruit in your recruit in the country out of Mater Alabama. Day in California. Get out of here, dude. He didn't Under start dog. right away in Alabama. Oh, so he poor felt, he felt me. That. <laughs> oh, I had to back up to uh, Mac Jones. Look, he oh. worked, he bust his ass to get that million dollars preseason yeah. signing bonus. Okay. <laughs> He's had a rough he life. On campus. He had okay. a million dollar deal. <laughs> He had That's a million unbelievable. Deal before he Everybody even played a game. Cut the kid a break. He beat Georgia. God. Again, you have these frauds yeah. that are just out in the open. Like, who are you fooling? Dude? You're not fooling yeah. anybody. Like, all the Bama fans already root for you. Like, yeah. who are you ca- who are you catering yeah, to right now? It, Your it, own it, ego. Well, just, just come so out and be trying like, to cover up for Tua getting drafted and being a paper bag in the NFL. <laughs> basically, saying that he's going to overcome he any. <laughs> Draft stock that he gets, but that's quietly. Yes, don't look, don't look now. But the Dolphins are hot. 
in yeah. the hunt. It was rattled off five W's in a row. Uh, that, anyway, the best, the best thing about the Heisman was Desmond Howard just keeping it real. I thought it was hilarious when he, oh, about, when he said something about Ohio State's O line. I loved it. I loved it. But everybody, he had a this this culture today. He had to have an apology to the Ohio yeah. State. Like, I'm sorry that I called your O line bad because they got sacked eight times in the you know against yeah. against Michigan. <sighs> The Heisman committee owes Bailey Zappi an apology for not inviting yeah. him to the freaking yeah for real. That should be your apology. ceremony. Anyway, Zeke, who you got in that game? <laughs> I got West, I got Western Kentucky. It's hard to follow up with Murph said, but I think I think I agree with him. Uh, I do have a question, and yeah, and I'm not sure. So the offensive coordinator for Western Kentucky forgot his name. It slipped my mind. Zach is he Kittley. gone or is Kittley. he staying? He's going to Texas Texas Tech. Tech. But he's not he's not calling this game, right? No. Right. Okay. So that to me is the only way that App State's favored in this game. And mm-hmm. I love yeah. Sean Clark. I love Chase Bryce, but I mean this is a quarterback battle and I don't think that I mean Western no, Kentucky Western Kentucky's almost defense beat. is bad. It's not good. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm not trying to just trying to can, give a little bit of back and forth and I'm not letting you talk. I apologize. Y'all y'all are saying it's against your chick choosing a QB. It's App State's defense. They ain't, they're not just going against an average defense here. And I, Chase Price is probably going to be able to pick apart. As long as he takes Jeff's advice from that Mar- that Marshall game. Single high just, safety, you got to look Yeah, if he off. takes the single high safety and throw well, it over the top, he, he should be able to pick game. apart. <laughs> he hey, now, well, he's I, usually and, one good game, one bad game. I get it. And, and App State's defense is very good. But this is the one of the best quarterbacks in the nation and one of the best offenses in the nation. And, hell, they couldn't beat Louisiana, and I just think that if it comes down to it, you know, Western Kentucky almost came back against UTSA in one quarter. So, App State's not known to run the score up on anybody. So, I think that Western Kentucky's got it. <laughs> when it comes and it comes to Zach Hitley not being there, I mean, Bailey Zappi knows the offense, and I think you just give him the keys and like, hey, bud, call your own game. You know that you know the calls, you know the signals. You got a question asked? Like, Isn't this is your every bowl game. Quarterback's dream. Oh, hundred percent. Let's go Were five running, wide, spread them right, out. Let's what, just. What did uh? What did Matt Mummy say? What do they call it? Six. You're just gonna call all goes every play. All goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, go give me six. Yeah. Um. Man, I, I'm with you. I want to. I really want to go Western. Um, because I think it's gonna be really good weather in Boca Raton. You know, the speed's gonna be there. But App State's got two really good corners. Uh, Jolly and Jones, and it's that matchup, man. Their defense is just solid, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take App. I'm gonna Let's take be realistic them. here. I'm not. I mean, I know I sound heartless, but they've got some trouble right now with tornadoes in Kentucky. So they, is that going to impact their practices? Did they have any damage in Bowling Green? I don't know. But yeah, I think I'm sure did. some of their families did. That's going to be weighing on their mind. App State, they're in an think- indoor facility getting after it. Yeah. And, and App State definitely does remain focused, so they probably do have the mental edge there. So, and All right. Cam Peoples has already announced that he is coming back for his senior year. I just got yeah, he he's me that he's we that's, we that's got a role here, but he he's got to be hurt or something. He only had like six. I he had like six carries in the championship game. It was a lot of the fans I was sitting with were were wondering what was up with that. It was definitely a weird. He was well, just kind of standing that there. Kind of happened to him all year. That kind of happened to him all year in a lot of games he we were could watching. Could have been just one of those. He's probably getting surgery right now. No one knows. Oh, well, shoot. Hope not for the bowl game. Maybe after the bowl well, game. The rumor is he tried to take a knee one game and, you know, <laughs> messed his knee up. And that's why he hadn't <laughs> been on the field. <laughs> no, nah, the rumor yeah. is he didn't take a knee and got beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I'll, I'll speed it rip. up. Here we go here. The PUBG Mobile. New Mexico Bowl. You got UTEP versus Fresno State. Fresno, 11 and a half point favorites. Jess, what you got? Fresno's grown on me, so I'm, I'm taking Fresno. UTEP had a great season, but I think Fresno's just going to overpower them. I'm going to take Fresno. Murph? Yeah, I got Fresno State. Had some huge news this past week. Yeah. Jeff, T- Jeff Tedford is getting a second stint at Fresno State. One of the quarterback gurus on the West Coast, coached at Cal. Had Aaron Rodgers under his tutelage. I mean, we see what he's doing in the NFL and a, a lot of other uh, NFL quarterbacks as well. So I'm excited to see him. And Jay Kaner decides to stay now at yeah. Fresno State for next year. So I cannot wait to watch those two together and see this this team keep going. And uh, But I got this week Fresno State, and I think they cover. Zeke, what do you got? 
Fresno State smokes UTEP with a lit cigar up the hind end. <laughs> UTEP's been playing with pillows all year. Remember, boys. Uh, That's what I'm saying. They're, Fresno yeah. State's a ball team. UTEP, UTEP, I don't even – some of these – Teams on this list, I'm like, you took one six games. My God, how'd that you happen? You took like six and zero at games. one point. Yeah, six like, and oh. yeah, they won the pillow fight. And then they you probably took, lost you has like nine or ten wins. Do they not? Yeah, I figured they'd be in the My Pillow <laughs> Bowl. <laughs> that guy got canceled a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> My Pillow Bowl. I love that. Um, yeah, give me Fresno. I'm assuming Jake Hayner is going to play in this game. If that's why this line is what it is. Um. So he was going to transfer, and then with the hiring of Tedford, he decided to stay. So I'm guessing he's playing. Um, so I'll go Fresno there. Um, 21. Yeah. Radiance Technologies. <laughs> God bless. Independence Bowl, 3.30 p.m. on ABC. UAB versus BYU. BYU, seven-point favorites. Jess? Seven-point favorites for a good reason. They're, they're going to win by seven, maybe ten. Murph? Yeah, BYU is a, gr- a great team, and that running back is a stud. Yeah, Zeke, you did you choose BYU, Murph? Yeah, BYU. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm going BYU. I just wanted to make sure for a second. I thought he chose UAB, and I was about no. to battle him. But yeah, I mean, I I think UAB is really good. It's just BYU's BYU's like very very good. They've had a really good season. Yeah. Um. There's too big, too physical. Um, I'll take BYU to cover too. Um, Lending Tree Bowl. What did this one used to be? Is this the old GoDaddy Bowl? Where's that? Mm. Is it Montgomery? Let me look at it. I up. mean, is it, is it Mobile? No, GoDaddy Bowl is always January 6th. Trust me, I know. <laughs> uh, Lending Tree Bowl. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Lad Peebles. Yeah, it's in Mobile. Well, they changed, I guess, those 10 it's years maybe, ago. It's maybe, well, I don't think GoDaddy's been a bull for a long time, but it was the Dollar General Bowl for a long time. But, uh, yeah, you got Eastern Michigan versus Liberty. Liberty's nine-point favorites. Jess, what do you got? I'm taking Eastern Michigan. Why? Right. Because it's in the MAC and they're going to get wins. And Eastern <laughs> Michigan's offense has been pretty thriving all year, and they've been – every – game they played this year has been a battle, so I don't see why they would get killed by Liberty, and I think Liberty's had a horrible season compared to what they're used to. So I think Hugh Freeze goes there and gets frozen up. Oh, Eastern Michigan. Murph? I think Liberty wins, but I think it's a really close game. Zeke? You know, I I want to go with Grisham here. I like Eastern Michigan, and I think they can take it to them, and who knows who – who Freeze is talking to on the side. So, good point. Very good point. Yeah, I think most of the jobs are filled, but yeah, you never know. There's, there's always that one that kind of he'll be last, in a strip club, last in mobile somewhere. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Um. Everybody in the club yeah, Liberty really. Good. I mean, they had high expectations. They were talking about Malik Willis being the number one quarterback in the draft. They were talking yeah. about him at Heisman Dark Horse, this and that. They really haven't uh, panned out entirely. That being said, I still think they're a little better than Eastern Michigan. I'll take Liberty in that one. I think close though. I don't, I don't think they. I don't think they win by nine. Um. God, what a terrible sponsor. This next one is the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl presented by Stifle. <laughs> 730 oh on ABC, God. probably right before Jimmy Kimmel show. Uh, but I like this game. It's the first group of five versus power five matchup. It's Utah State versus Oregon State. Oregon State's seven point favorites. There are seven group of five versus power five bowl games. And in every single one of them, they have the power five as the points favorite. So this one's seven points. Jesse, what do you think? Um, Love the game. Hate Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, I think Oregon State, they're like ranked 76 overall in total defense. It sounds crazy here, but I think Utah State's had just as uh, hard a schedule as Oregon State. So I don't know why they're favored by seven, probably just because they're power five. So I think Utah State, conference champs, living on cloud nine right now, they go in and they upset Oregon State. It's another power five win for the group of five. Murph? Yeah, I agree with you, Grish. Um, Utah State wins. I think they're fired up to play. 
another Power 5 school, and I think Oregon State thinks they're just going to walk in this game and just beat up on a, a inferior team. So I think Utah State wins the Jimmy Kimball Bowl. <laughs> Zeke? Yeah, I'm going with Utah State. I think Utah State's got plenty of time to prep for this game. And, you know, kind of like Murph said, Oregon State is going to walk into this game. They're focused on the extra practices and seeing who they got coming up through the ranks. And I think Utah State's scheming for this game to win it and represent the group five. I like that. I'm right there with you, Zeke. Um, I think Utah State – I think uh, really high scoring. I don't know what the over-under is on this, but I would probably take the over. Too much Devin Tompkins. Um, but Oregon State's got a re- – they- Oregon State kind of came out of nowhere and had a pretty good year this year. Uh, they got a really good O-line. Uh, but I will take Utah State in this one. Um, I'll take now- the Mountain West over Pac-12. Oh, yeah. Top Honestly, to bottom. This area, year especially. No question about it. No question. Um. R&L Carriers, New Orleans Bowl, 9-15 Eastern. Nah, Louisiana we... Raging Cajuns, five-point favorites against the Marshall Thundering Herd. Jess, what you got? I promise you the Marshall Thundering Herd are hating this agreement that the Sunbelt champions have to go to the New Orleans Bowl because Louisiana should be at a better bowl, and I think they're pissed. They lost their head coach, but I think they're, they are – on freaking fire, man. And I think they end the season no better way than a huge win over Marshall. I'm saying a huge win over Marshall. They cover easily minus five. Louisiana big. Murph, what you got? You know, I'm actually going to go with Marshall on this one. I think, not ha- I think not having their head coach. I think going to New Orleans, you know, I think Marshall's got something to prove. And I think Marshall beats him. Wow. Zeke? You know, I'm going to have to disagree with old Jeff Murphy on this one. I think Geronimo with the AU, EUAX. I don't, I don't know how you spell his name, but <laughs> the I think coach. he's yeah. – <laughs> Geronimo. <laughs> I, Geronimo. I don't know how you spell it. Like, no, 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 Billy, no, Billy, no, like, Billy. I don't care. <laughs> You talking about the? I'm, we're talking about the old, the new coach. Yeah, for the you right now. Can't pronounce his last name. <laughs> How do you say it? I, I have no idea. <laughs> that song's gonna be stuck in my head all day now. Geronimo, the, the Boudin is gonna be flowing down there though. Duh. Oh my god. Anyway, that's another geez, thing too. Man. They have another advantage because I'm sure they've been to New Orleans. They've been there, done that. I mean, Marshall gets in there like, oh, look at that, a strip club. Hey, it's <laughs> not a far transit. <laughs> Why'd you give Marshall a Cajun accent? No clue. <laughs> I, gave, I gave him one of them. I gave him one of them. Brian Kelly's, Brian Kelly's the new coach. <laughs> Marshall the strip club covers. is here for my family. <laughs> he, I bet that guy goes into Take every this donation for my family. He goes, down, he goes to every recruit's house and changes his accent. <laughs> no question. Oh, okay. yeah. Anyway, Zeke, back to Geronimo. What you got there? <laughs> Geronimo leads the way. They they cover minus five. Yeah, and I Marshall's think only... corners are soft. Me and Murph know that. The only thing that I worry about with Louisiana in this game is that they've had a tendency to play to the level of their opponent. Um, they've gotten up for their big games, except that Texas game. Uh, but they got a chance to win thirteen ball games this year, uh, and they are, I think, like even though there's a coaching change, the way that they were – the way that Napier left and the way that those players and those fans and, and other coaches took it, it wasn't like a – it wasn't a bad breakup. So I think they're still going to be firing on all cylinders. Um, I will take the Cajuns. Um, I'll take them – I'll take them to cover that too. Um, Myrtle Beach Bowl presented by Tax Act. Uh, that's on Monday, December 20th. That's Old Dominion versus Tulsa. You know, we as much as crap as we gave Jesse about Tulsa, they ended up winning six games. They ended up okay. I mean, certainly no American champion. I had them going undefeated, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that I don't know about. But they are nine and a half point year. favorites in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. So, Jess, what you got? They're still my dark horse for next year, and it starts <laughs> at the eight at the Tax Act Bowl. Sorry, I couldn't remember what it was. The tax Myrtle Act Beach Bowl, where it starts, Davis Brin has a field day. Uh, they got the 35th overall offense, and I think ODU cannot keep up with them. 
I, I like Tulsa winning this ball game. Murph. Three letters. O D U. O M G. <laughs> they win. That's all I got. That's all you Straight got, up. Huh? Straight up. I think Tulsa barely got in to this ball, and I think they lose. Okay. Zeke, what do you got? So I got Tulsa. I get you, Merv. ODU has been scoring some points, and but I think Tulsa got it clicking a little, a little late in the season. So I'm going to go Tulsa. ODU is on a five-game winning streak, so they had to rattle off five in a row to make this bowl game. Uh, mm -hmm. They are super hot fire. Um, <clears throat> I will take them in the upset. And yeah, plus, buddy. it's a borderline home game for them. It's a lot of travel for Tulsa. Yep. Um, Myrtle Beach, kind of like, you know, you guys talking about Louisiana. I've been in New Orleans a bunch of times. It's not, hopefully not going to, you know, get the best of them. Myrtle Beach, I think, gets pretty wild, too. I mean, we know from coastal team that uh, they get after it. So, I think ODU would be a little more poised in that one. Um, it's been a bowl game for a long time. The famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Not featuring the potato poppers, Zeke, but that game is uh, three thirty on ESPN. Tu ESPN Tuesday, December twenty first. Kent State versus Wyoming. Wyoming minus three. Jesse, what do you got? Mac attack. Taking Kent State. Taking your boy Dustin Crum. Murph. I'm curious to why Wyoming's the favorite in this game. Because they never give Mac love in the bowl games. <laughs> They're what they call yeah. Zeke trap games. That's the, it's it's throwing me off because I I want to go Kent State Dustin Crum, hashtag not Heisman. Um, but you know I'm I'm gonna go with the favorite. On that. I'm gonna go Wyoming. I think it's a shorter shorter travel for them. And you I don't know. I just I, I like Wyoming and their running attack. Zeke? Xavion Valade. You know, I think this is a platform for Dustin Crum to go out and and show what he can do and that. Kent State offense if they start clicking early. So I'm going Kent State money line with the upset. Y'all are not going to believe this. Uh, I'm taking know. Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Whole season. I mean, yeah, Kent State just hadn't – they're like just – well, both of these teams are so hit or miss. I mean, Kent State offensively, Dustin Crum will have one really good game and you think he's going to, you know, get on a roll and then he comes back and doesn't play too hot. Uh, Jeff, you were real high on Wyoming's linebacker, Chad Muma, oh, preseason. Yeah, um, that guy's um, – I want to say he was first, second or third team All-American. Yeah. Um, he'll, he'll definitely be an all-group of five guy when we release those rankings there. But uh, I'll take Wyoming in that one. The This is – you wish that both of these teams had a chance to play in a New Year's game, but this is a really good matchup. Mm -hmm. Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN. UTSA, two-and-a-half-point favorites against San Diego State. Jesse, what do you got? Probably my most excited bowl game for the group of five, to be completely honest with you. And I also think it's the most clear, obvious predictions. Uh, San Diego State, number two defense in the country. All you have to do is stop the run, which they are also number two in rush defense. So I think San Diego State can stop uh, Sincere, and I think San Diego State's going to win. I got SDSU. Murph? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to go with UTSA on this one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'm not just picking opposite. Either me, either I'm going to come in first in the pickings or I'm going to come in last, <laughs> vice versa for Jeff. Um, no, I think that the same kind of issue with San Diego State's had all year, when, when a team gets up on them, they can't, they can't score with them. And I think with Frank Harris and Sincere McCormick and that offense – their ability to put up points really on almost who, whoever they have played this year is going to be an issue for San Diego State. Yeah. Zeke, we got. Yeah, I'd really like to see what the under is on this game because, and I'm trying to look it up right now, and maybe I'll just have to come back to it, but really would like to look at the, the under. But, you know, Grisham makes a good point with San Diego State's defense in the rushing game. I just – I feel like UTSA and Sincere McCormick are hard to stop. So, I feel like if they can get the run game going, they're going to control the game. And I, I think they I think they win. Yeah, UTSA? Take, 
Yeah. Okay. I'll take UTSA as well. Um, Thursday, the 23rd, you got the Frisco Football Classic, North Texas versus Miami of Ohio. Uh, Miami, Ohio, minus three. Jesse, what do you got? I mean, North Texas, have you seen them? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, Miami, Ohio, Cameron Butler, DN, boss, all Mac player, big game. I'm just going to take Miami, Ohio because of him. I, I like the way that kid plays. Murph. <laughs> I'm going to go North Texas. They've been playing hot <laughs> as of late. I mean, they beat UTSA towards the end of the season. I, I just their, – their offense has been scoring points. So, I'm going to go North Texas. Mean green. I mean, North Texas, have you seen them? <laughs> Miami, Ohio, I don't know what got into them, but I feel like I have to shit on North Texas right here. So, I'm going Miami <laughs> over Ohio. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to take North Texas in this one. Uh, old Seth Luttrell saved his job the last couple weeks of the season, I think, uh, by beating beating UTSA and them. Uh, so I'll go North Texas. Union Home Mortgage, Gasparilla Bowl. It's another. This is this is a gigantic game. UCF mm-hmm. versus Florida. Is that in Tampa? It is in Tampa. That thing sold out too, and I. Ooh. A lot of people think it's going to be mostly UCF fans because they're more excited to play Florida. But did I when Florida went to South Florida this year to play like at South Florida? That's one of those places Jesse was talking about with the atrocious thing. The damn Florida fans come out of the woodworks that go to school at UCF and USF. Mm-hmm. So we we shall see. It might be a situation where you know, depending on who's winning, depends on what. T-shirt sure the these guys are wearing. Yeah. But, Jess, what do you got in this one? I'm going to be honest with you. I have written down here Florida, but I can't I can't say it because I think you got two – honestly, sorry, you said – I think you got two bad ball clubs here. <laughs> They're not yeah. – the two teams are not playing that good. Uh, one still has their coach. One just lost their coach, getting Billy Napier. They're probably fired up about that, but Billy ain't coaching in the bowl season. So, I'm going to say UCF, Gus Bus gets a big-time win for his program and puts UCF back on the map going in for next year. He's got the play. He's got players talented, like Zeke said before in the past. He's got talent on that roster that can compete with Florida. Why not? Uh, you got you got three weeks to prepare for him, so I'm taking UCF. Murph? Yeah, again, I think you have one team that's more excited to play this game than the other, and I think UCF beats Florida. Bounce house travels. Zeke? Yeah, UCF. I for sure. Money line. Florida, this is this is not the expectation for them. Their their team is gonna go there and travel and party. UCF's going for a business trip and they're ready to rock and take the next step and be in the top team in Florida. Yeah, this is a state championship game, uh, because Florida beat Florida State, Florida State beat Miami. And now UCF's got a chance to beat Florida, and I think they will. Um, I think uh, Florida's in shambles, man. That's a that, Billy Napier. You got your work cut out for you yep, there, buddy. Sure do. I um, mean, they got a bunch of guys transferring. Um, I mean, they're just. I mean, they barely won six games, and so I'll take UCF in that one. Um, easy post Hawaii Bowl. Memphis seven point favorites. Pretty much at Hawaii. Well, ain't no pretty much. It is at Hawaii. Jesse, what do you think? I'm taking Hawaii, home team. Murph? Yep, Rainbow Warriors. Memphis has got to travel a long way. Zeke? Mm, I think it's a low start for the Tiger. Slow start for the Tigers. But I think they they pull it out if they don't party too hard in Hawaii. Yeah. We, we've been saying it all year. Hawaii plays so much better at home. I think the Tigers are going to be out there. They're going to be snorkeling with the sea turtles. They're going to be playing on the black sand beaches. Sipping Mai Tais. Yeah, sipping Mai Tais, doing hula dances, the whole thing. I'll take Hawaii in that one. Um, Christmas Day Bowl. I love it. This is Tax Act here with their second sponsored bowl game. I mean, good on old Tax Act, really spending the big bucks. The Camellia Bowl, 230. ESPN on Christmas Day, you got Georgia State versus Ball State. Jesse, what do you think? I love Georgia State, but I cannot keep contradicting what I've been saying all year, so I'm taking Ball State. 
I'm Ball not taking State the Mac, and their, the Mac and their poor win. their poor senior leadership. Oh shit! Same season's thing. gonna yeah. crumble. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take them to win the bowl game too. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking Mac over Georgia State. <laughs> Murph, what you got? I'm gonna take Georgia State in this one. I think they they come out and they just beat up on Ball State. Zeke, we've been to the Camellia Bowl together. I was gonna I was gonna wonder if you were gonna reference the old yeah. Camellia Bowl. Yeah, we harassed Buster Faulkner. Yeah, we um, sure did. As he was calling plays in the in the press box, so yep. I'm going Georgia State. They were my Sun Belt dark horse. I think that it took them a little little too long to figure out who their quarterback was, and I think now they're they're clicking on offense. So Georgia State, they've got more athletes and shorter transit. Yeah, I'll take I'll take Georgia State in that one. I think they'll have a decent uh, group travel, family and friends mostly. Um, it's going to be tough to ask people to travel from Ball State down to Montgomery, Alabama on for, for Christmas Day. Um, so you'll probably just have a couple players, mom and dad, and that's about it. I think Georgia State's probably got a bunch of guys from Montgomery or from, you know, South Alabama. So that's a good point. Um, they'll, they'll have a crowd, short travel. There's not a whole lot to get into in Montgomery as far as nightlife or, you know, whatever they're going to do during the week. Uh, so I'll take Georgia State. Um, after Christmas, you got December 27th. You got the Quick Lane Bowl in Detroit. Western Mish, three-and-a-half-point favorites versus Nevada. Uh, Nevada coaching staff on their way to Colorado State. Um, not sure how many players are going to follow or who's going to play in this one, but uh, Jesse, what do you think? Western Michigan for the points you just you just <clears throat> made. That, that's why I got Western Michigan win this game. Murph? Yeah, I'm going to go Western Michigan as well. They see a home game for them. Do we know if Carson Strong, Romeo Dubs, those guys are playing or I would assume they I would assume they are. I mean, they they you want to get as much film as possible. Yeah. I mean, but at the same time, I mean, who knows? I hadn't heard anything. I hadn't hadn't seen yeah. anything on the Twitters yet. Yeah, I'm with you. Zeke, what are you thinking this one? Well, I was thinking exactly what you just asked. Is Carson Strong's and or, and Romeo Dubs playing in this game? So, I don't know. It's it's a question mark. So, I think to be safe and like Murph said, Western Michigan is basically a home game. So, may as well take them. Yeah, um, I'll go Nevada just to be different. And I mean, I don't. I really have no idea in that particular game if Carson Strong and Romeo Dubs are playing and they're if if they do kind of what. Uh, what are we talking about with Bailey Zappi? If if Carson Strong gets the keys and they just say, go out there and do your thing, um, even though, you know, Matt Mummy's gone, I, I think they'll be able to put up some points. So I'll go Nevada. Um, another Power Five, Group of Five ball game. Military Bowl presented by Paraton. Boston College versus East Carolina. Boston College, three-point favorites. Jess, what you got? First, I thought I was brought to you by Peloton, so I was about to be like, awesome. <laughs> oh, Peloton's uh, got some lawsuits on their hands right now. From watching that Sex in the City deal? I don't know anything. What? I mean, that's what I've heard. <laughs> I thought somebody... Nobody watched Sex in the City this week? The new one? No. no. Right, I thought right, story somebody time. I know Sex in along. the City died on the Peloton. Yeah, so... In look, real life, I My thought. wife's big Sex in the City fan... And I ain't gonna lie, I like the movies. We were the HBO Max, the new Sex in the Cities of came course. out, and Big, who is one of the main actors, actresses' husbands, he rides the Peloton all the time. And she goes out to a show and leaves him at home. He's, he's just gonna work out. He has a heart attack on the Peloton and dies. And now everybody's over thinking that Pelotons are gonna kill you. Look, they ain't killed my fat ass yet. It's okay. But um, I thought that's ridiculous. Everybody's freaking out saying Pelotons kill you. Uh, I thought that the actor from Sex and the City died. No, like, no, in no, real no, life. No, on no the he Peloton. died on the show because he had a heart oh, attack. Oh my god! It was fucking heartbreaking. Jeez. He may have had some PDs going on. That gave him that heart attack. We'll figure it out next week. Wow. Uh, so it's not it's Paraton, which I don't know what it is. I'm guessing that's some sort of a military contractor. Um well either way, back to my pick. I'm taking Boston College over your ECU oh, Pirates. No. Jeff, what you got? I mean I've been high on East Carolina all season, <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the Pirates on this one. <laughs> Zeke. You know, the 
the Pirates hung it in there with the old Bearcats there for a minute. So I, I like a little ECU money line upset. Yeah, give me give me ECU in that one as well. Um, Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl, another Group of Five Power Five game. Houston versus Auburn. Auburn three point favorites. That may change. That I got that line before the Bo Nix and Tank Bigsby news came out. And let me tell you, Sprouse, we were like Auburn home field advantage. Birmingham. Auburn ain't happy to be in the Birmingham Bowl. I promise you. Houston's gonna probably travel well. Here's your upset. I'm taking yeah. Houston beating Auburn in Birmingham, Alabama. And there's going to be Crimson Tide fans there at the Birmingham Bowl just to harass Auburn fans. So, wearing Houston stuff. So, I'm taking Houston probably big. Your boy, your boy the punt returner, I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. I'll say he gets one. Uh, it, it's Marcus gonna Jones. be a big game for Houston. Yeah, I like it. Jeff, what do you got? Yeah, I'm with you, Grish. Houston, I think they get the upset. Zeke? Well, can y'all fill me in on the, the Bo Nix? What's, he, what's he, entered, he entered he's the transfer, transfer portal, and then their running back is probably more important, Tank Bigsby. He's supposedly entering the transfer portal. All is, so all is telling me well that on one, the Western front here. Y'all telling me that one-legged cat from that <laughs> almost beat Alabama is playing? <laughs> yeah, Finley, right? <laughs> oh, I'm taking him. One-legged cat, baby. Auburn. Over Houston, they got too many athletes. Bigger, faster, stronger. I think uh, maybe not faster, but bigger. Yeah, I like Houston, man. Houston's Houston's got a good a good team. I'll I'll take them. Auburn. I live relatively close to Auburn guys, and and they are they're ready to can old Harson already. <laughs> that poor guy. Jeez. That poor guy was one play away from beating Alabama. They were going to build him a statue, and two weeks later, they're ready to fire his ass. <laughs> Hey, typical. welcome to the SEC, Billy yeah, Napier. Yeah, I was going to say, yep, typical yeah. SEC mentality. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'll take Houston in that one. Surf Pro, first responder bowl, Air Force versus Louisville, another group of five, power five. This one's the closest spread. Uh, well, tied for the closest spread as far as group of five, power five go. Louisville, point and a half favorite. Jess, what you got? I don't think Louisville's defense will be able to stop Air Force on the ground and pounds. I'm going to take Air Force. Murph? Falcons soar. Past Louisville. This, this that being game. said, though, Air Force better be ready to stop old quarterback for Louisville because it, it's going to be a high scoring game. It'll be a high scoring game. Like, yeah. like Zeke's about to say. Zeke, what you got? <laughs> well, that's kind of what I was going to say. But <laughs> oh, you, 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 you can edit that. I, I hope that Air Force gives the first response because if not, <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> it's it's going to be a high scoring game. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm going Air Force. Yeah, um, I'm going to take Air Force. I think they'll they'll really try to control the clock on that yeah. one. And keep uh, what is that quarterback's name? Cunningham or something like that? Yeah, Malik Lamar Cunningham. Two point oh. Is that who that is? Jackson. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Air Force will try to keep the ball out of his hands, and then yeah, you're right, Louisville. I don't think they're going to be ready for that option attack. I think they'll be. Where's that game at? Dallas, Fort Worth. Surf Pro, I think so. I think it's in Dallas, but look it up. Anyway, I'll take Air Force in that one. Uh, the God bless these sponsors. The Wasabi Fenway Bowl at Fenway Park. Fenway Park. <laughs> Brian Kelly. He, he actually is from Boston. Hey, that's the one. Who the hell knows where have. that where that guy's from? See that scumbag dancing with the with the with the recruit. It was going all over. I mean, I would decommit. I mean, I would too. Oh. Anyway, you like, got, your, like your weird uncle. Yeah. You got SMU versus Virginia in this one. Virginia point and a half favorite. Jesse, what do you got? I would have taken SMU, but due to offseason changes, I'm taking Virginia. Murph? Yeah, I'm going to – as much as I hate agreeing with Grisham, I'm going to go with Virginia on this one. Wow. Zeke? I'm gonna go SMU. I still think that if they can keep keep the mo going, I know their coach with TCU and all that, but I'm gonna go SMU. I think they can, get, they can put it put it on them one last time. Yeah, I don't think they. I, it seemed like them players didn't even like that coach, and he really he he's not getting the publicity, but he was kind of a snake too. Uh, Sonny Dykes kind of did a pull to Brian Kelly on SMU, yeah. but they already got they got Rhett, Rhett Lashley. 
who was the OC at Miami, and I mean, he's only been gone from SMU for like a year and a half. So well, him, I think him, they're him and another uh, guy that shall not be named on this show coach together. So shows the type of company he keeps. Got the same kind of same oh, haircut. Yeah. 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 There's a couple different, uh, you know, air raid folks that got two different schools. See what oh. kind of guy some of these guys ace, are. But ace. The... Excuse me? Go sluggo. Go sluggo. <laughs> ace. Uh, yeah, give me SMU in that one. Uh, last one. This is going to kick off right before the playoff game. This bowl sweet. I bet th- I bet they got the best like gift packages. The bar can't wait to watch this bowl. Game. It's only it's not it's the only game that's not on the ESPN family of networks. It's only on Barstool and I think like YouTube you can watch it. Um Central Michigan versus Boise State. Boise State is 8 point favorites in this game. Jesse, what do you got? Um Probably gonna regret this, but I'm going with the Mac again. Mac upset. I'm gonna take Central Michigan. Murph, potato poppers, baby. Boise State. Zeke, what do you got? You know I got them potato poppers, baby. Where is that game, by the way? Uh, I believe it's in Phoenix. Yeah, I was gonna say it's Arizona. Oh, nice. Yeah, so Boise, much closer travel. Um, I got a feeling that's gonna be one of those games. Like, do y'all remember when we? played navy in that in that armed forces bowl and like the whole week was basically a navy pep rally i got a feeling that that's how this is going to be for boise state i think they're they're the brand name school in the game and i'm I'm sure barstool is not gonna not gonna be politically correct in like how they treat the teams um i can't wait to see (laughs) i can't wait to see how how they cover this and promote it and just everything about it I, yeah. I have a feeling it's going to be op- completely opposite of ESPN, which is going to be, be fantastic. It'll be, it'll be awesome. I oh, they're probably going to be doing wait. like video it from the sidelines. Probably like XFL. <laughs> yeah. well, I think the camera will be somewhat similar, but I'm just talking about like the lead up to the game and the coverage. Like they always do their like get Barstool game day, right? That, I, I would yeah. assume they're going to have that, right? They would have to. I, yeah, I would imagine so. Uh, it's going to be tight. That would be a really good bowl game to go to. It's probably one of the better ones yeah. that we just mentioned. And it's in, in Arizona. It's yeah. sweet. Who did you pick, Sprouse? I hadn't picked yet. Uh, no, I did. Boise State. Okay. Um, but that's all we got. Um, well, not- don't do it just yet, Sprouse. I do want to let the crowd know one thing. The guys that have weighed this far, we have our regular season ending standings. If anybody's curious on who is number last place. Got me, mate, right? It's Jeff Murphy. Jeff Murphy, you came at last, but you know what? You may redeem yourself, totally redeem yourself in the bowl season with these bowl picks. Uh, Matt Sprouse, mm. you are second to last. Zeke Anderson with a comeback, tying me for second place. And Tyler mm. Tipton ran away with it, boys. He, he he beat us by like eight games. You know, Tip just you know he beats us because he has he he shows no He's an analyst, allegiance. Maybe. He yeah. shows no emotional allegiance to his teams. We all do. Like me here, I took about five Mac wins in the bowl games just because I said Mac would win a lot of their bowl games. But some of them I had to bite my tongue on a little bit because yeah. Boise State might take it to Central. But the Mac will prevail. <laughs> well, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Um, it'll be that, that week after Christmas. We'll do a full-blown college football playoff. Goodyear Cotton Bowl preview, Cincinnati and Alabama. That line right now is a 13 and a half. I'm thinking it's going to move in Alabama's favor in the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to hammer Cincinnati on that thing. Oh, yeah. But um, we'll be back to do that. As always, it's been a pleasure. Tyler Tipton, we're thinking about you. Congratulations, man. We miss you. That's all we got. Group of five guys, we're out of here.